Let's try to get answers to some of those questions with our panel this evening. Robert Mahoney, he is Deputy Executive Director of the Committee to Protect Journalists, and Cameron Bahari, Middle East geopolitical expert at the University of Ottawa. He is joining us from D.C. Robert, I start with you. Your organization is really committed to keeping journalists safe. What do you make of how President Trump is handling the situation? Well, it's totally inadequate. You have a, um, a very prominent uh, journalist who is a U.S. resident working for the Washington Post who's lured into a diplomatic mission by Saudi Arabia and doesn't come out. If the president doesn't come out with a forthright demand that the Saudis explain what has happened in a very credible and timely way, then that sends a message that he doesn't care about the lives of journalists. Okay, but Cameron, is it on the Saudis to, pr to prove that he never came out of the consulate, or is it on Turkey to prove they actually have this evidence? Well, I think that the Saudis have the responsibility to prove uh, the accusations against them. I mean, keep in mind, I mean, the president has already hinted at what is called, you know, rogue killers, to, to quote President Trump. So that suggests that the Saudis know that this man was killed. That is how that information went to the president of the United States, and, and then he gave it to the press. So if the man was still alive, it, was in the, it is in the Saudi interest to say, look, he's right here, and then, you know, deal with far lesser consequences than having to, uh, you know, continue with this speculation and whatnot. The fact that, you know, they're not able to produce the man speaks volumes about, you know, how this ended very, very badly for Jamal Khashoggi. And it's a very good point. The president seems to want this to go away. The Saudis want this to go away. But we're getting this drip drip of information from Turkish media. Robert, how difficult is it for American journalists to verify what's true or what's not? Well, it's very difficult. The Turkish uh, security services have cameras, they have, they have intercepts. So they have been leaking this to the international media. What we don't have is definitive proof. Right. But the fact is the man has been missing for more than two weeks and there is no investigation. If the Saudis, as they say, didn't know about this, why would they fear an independent international investigation? On the other hand, if the Saudi regime actually ordered this, this investigation would be a farce, because if they ordered it, they wouldn't need an investigation, Cameron. Exactly, and, and the, this places the United States in a very, very difficult dilemma, probably the most difficult time in U.S.-Saudi relations since this relationship began in 1945. And what we have right now is, on one hand, the United States just cannot keep a straight face and continue with business as usual with uh, the soon-to-be king, and who is likely to be king for many decades to come, given his young age and given the, the history of how Saudi monarchs have ruled until literally they have died. So we're dealing with a, a person who is now uh, has the reputation of being a rogue actor. So that's on one hand, you have the United States is dealing with that. On the other is that if you press too hard on the Saudis, this is not a really tough regime. This is a, a brittle regime which is undergoing, you know, internal management change, faces a lot of threats on the external front, is, is engaged in a disastrous war in Yemen. So the fear is that if the, somehow all this pressure on Saudi leads to the kingdom's destabilization, then that's bad news because the Turks, the Iranians, ISIS, al-Qaeda are going to try and fill that vacuum. And that's what the United States does not want to see happen. So this is a really, really big conundrum for Washington. Yeah, very good points there, Kamran. And we want you to stick around, Robert, as well, because we want to keep this conversation going right after this break. When Clear Cut returns, we'll also be talking about Gaza. A missile strike from Hamas hit a home in Israel as the violence there escalates. And Egypt's president is in Russia. What President Sisi's meeting with President Putin could mean for Egyptian relations with the United States. We'll talk about that all after the break. I'm Jeff Smith and I, 24 News. Brace yourself for your daily dose of news with top stories, sports, politics, and pop culture. There's more to the news than meets the eye. With the fast-paced, constantly changing headlines, we take you deeper. 
bringing you fresh insights into the conflicts, breakthroughs, heartaches and victories shaping your world. Unpacking the day's main events from angles you might not expect. I'm Tracy Alexander. Join me for Perspectives. for news. I'm David Schuster on I-24 News. Join us on Stateside. It's our channel's flagship broadcast, and it features our best reporting and analysis of news from around the world and from here in the United States. Watch Stateside, weeknights at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on I-24 News. The Middle East. I-24 News is a witness. Our journalists live and breathe there every day. Get all the latest global news from our studios in Tel Aviv, New York, Washington, and Paris. Anytime, anywhere. Download the I-24 News app, available on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple, and Google stores. I-24 News, see beyond. You are watching Clear Cut. The search for missing Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi continues as the Saudi government faces increased blame for his disappearance. Turkey has been given permission to search the home of the Saudi consul. They've already left that search for now. They're looking for clues in how he disappeared and what happened to him. A Turkish official is also denying that the Saudi's representative in Turkey was kicked out of the country. Take a listen. The consul general can return to his country. He was not expelled. It's not my business when he comes back. He went to his country. The Saudi authorities will decide on this matter. Let's bring back in Kamran Bokhari and Robert Mahoney. Robert, I wanted to ask you about this because you've got Turkey and Saudi Arabia fighting over this. Let's be real here. Turkey is not that great to journalists. No, Turkey is the world's biggest prison for journalists. There are more than 70 journalists in jail in Turkey by the count of the Committee to Protect Journalists. And for many years now, Turkey has been cracking down on a free press. So we're asking a country which is repressive towards its own journalists to stand up and assert the rights of a Saudi journalist who appears to have been killed on its soil. Right, there are a lot of ulterior motives happening behind the scenes here, it appears. Kamran... Just how do you think this ends? Does this get, you know, just brushed away or does the world want answers and they get the answers? Well, look, I mean, obviously, the as time goes by, uh, the urgency of this issue will fade. There will be other issues that will make the headlines and, you know, the news media is going to have to gravitate elsewhere. But one thing is for sure. I think that uh, the the crown prince of Saudi Arabia has rendered himself toxic. I don't think that, you know, the world can go back to where it was. I mean, keep in mind, even before this ghastly incident, uh, he was known for jailing opponents, uh, intimidating members of the royal family and other parts of the political economic elite in Saudi Arabia, forcing them into the Ritz-Carlton and make, rendering that a jail, uh, you know, instigating a ruinous war, both for the Yemenis and for the Saudis, uh, in, uh, on their southern border and the, the, the crisis with Qatar, and, and the list goes on. So now you have, you know, he's up the ante, and I think he's miscalculated big time in an attempt to have a very sort of, you know, consolidate power at home and, and push a very hyper-assertive foreign policy for a state that has historically been risk-averse. I mean, th those things are, you know, are bound to create miscalculations, and I think this is the biggest one. And so... I don't think this issue is going to go away. It may, you know, reduce in terms of significance, but this is going to be hanging over the, you know, the kingdom and, and U.S. relations with the kingdom for a very long time to come. The irony, Robert, here is that this is what Khashoggi was writing about in his columns in the Washington Post. And if the Saudis wanted to silence him, I mean, this is having the opposite effect. Totally. I mean, but it makes you wonder whether this was done deliberately in order to try to send some kind of message to intimidate other journalists. But if it, if it was that, then it's backfired. Because now you have this huge furore around this killing. 
and it will remain in the news because journalists, in order to protect themselves, have to make sure it stays in the news because it sends a message, not just to Saudi journalists, but to journalists everywhere, that if you're critical of this, uh, of this country, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, this could happen to you. Right, or any other country now. Everybody's, their eyes are on all journalists at this moment. Robert Mahoney, thank you for that. Kamran Bukhari there in Washington, D.C., we appreciate you coming on as well.